Hello, everyone. So, okay, I know in the description of this class, it said we are going to draw a plant, but I have totally, I totally changed it up. <laughs> so if you're welcome to use a, a plant or some sort of natural thing to help you in your sketches today. Um, however, I was thinking about this week. This week, it, the, the element of art is color. And um, in color, I, I was thinking about it and I, I was, I, 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 you could use a plant, but I, I thought that maybe it'd just be easier if we just use a piece of art that we have already drawn. So I was going back and most of you I recognize because you've taken class with me earlier this month. Um, and so I was looking through all of my drawings and I just pulled out a drawing that I did the other day. It was just this, which is what I'm going to use to add color to. Um, but like I said, today is all about color. So you need some sort of um, something to color. So it needs to be like a drawing from your sketchbook. It needs to be a drawing. You, it could be a simple drawing that you draw right now. And you also need some sort of coloring materials. Hello, everyone. Hi, Liliana. Hi, Heather Rose. Hello, everyone. Hi, Saif. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So it could be anything. It could be a character that you heard that you've, you've drawn a bunch. If you have something that's already drawn, that's probably better than drawing something out right now. So color is one of my favorite elements of art. Um, and there's so much to it. There's so much to color and color theory. If you ever are in college, when you, when you get to college and you see a class that's called color theory, take it because there is so much. So this is going to be like a color theory light class. Let me switch right now to my other video. So right here we have your typical color wheel and you guys might know some of this already. So I'm just going to really quickly talk about color, especially as it applies to, um, to uh, animation. So, and when animators are drawing, they, they really picking out, picking out like a, a, a color scheme is really important because the colors that you pick can really affect the mood of your drawing. Um, so in the color wheel, you guys probably already know you have your primary colors, your red, yellow, and blue. And if you've ever taken an elementary art class, hopefully you've mixed them to find your secondary colors. So red and yellow, I always like squeeze them together and you get orange, mix blue and red, you squeeze them together, you get purple, you mix blue and yellow, you squeeze them together, you get green. So those are the, the basics. Those are the super, super basics. But within that, there's other things. There's colors that look really good against one another. Actually, I'll write that word down. So colors that stand out against one another are called complementary. Like, almost like they complement, like you give each other a compliment. So complementary colors are colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. So yellow and purple are complementary colors. Um, red and blue are complementary colors. They, they stand out against one another. Um, sorry, blue, sorry, I did I say yellow and blue, I meant to say blue and orange. So yeah, blue and orange, actually, it could have been really more like that, that color. Red and green are complementary colors. So a lot of times, like, especially for blue and orange, you might see those colors in sports teams and sports jerseys. And that's just because those colors, like orange really pops um, on blue. Red and green, obviously, they're Christmas colors, but they're colors that just really stand out against one another. And the same can be said for purple and, and yellow. So I want to show you guys, I, I, if you've taken this class, a class with me, you might, I might have shown you this before, but these are some examples of um, the movie Up. You probably have, I don't know if you've seen the movie Up before, but let me zoom in just a little bit. So this is a scene from Up, and you see the, the two, two characters from Up, and I'm actually going to put, this is a different scene from Up. Let me zoom out. They have two different scenes from Up right here. The same characters. <laughs> yeah, Up is really sad in the beginning. It is like, I, I can't think I can watch it without crying. So um, if you notice, like in these two drawings, it's the same characters, 
but what's really, really different and what really like sets the mood of the scene are the colors that the, the animators chose. So this scene is like a flashback scene in the movie. And he's, he's thinking about like his life with his wife and it's like super bright, happy colors. Everything's nice and bright. And like, I see bright yellows and blues and greens. Uh, it's full of light. And then the bottom is also from the movie, same movie up and it's the husband and the wife and they're much older and the wife is in the hospital and she's sick. And you can, you can see though, in the colors, the colors are more muted. They're like all almost pastels. There's a lot of grays mixed in with the colors here. So we have a, a lot of, the, the color can really, really set the mood on a drawing. So you, you can, they can, you can you, colors can, um, can show happiness in your drawings, colors can show sadness in your drawings. So it, it's kind of interesting. And a lot of times when, when animating a movie, they do something called color scripting. And there's people who come in and they actually decide ahead of time what colors are going to be used for uh, what parts of their animation, which is kind of neat. And um, yeah, so colors can really be used not only to set moods, but they can also be used to like highlight certain areas of your drawing. So if you want something to stand out, you can make it pop based on based on the other colors in your drawing. So I just wanted to show you guys this to kind of show you how colors can really affect the mood of a drawing. If, um, if you've ever looked at um, any art by Picasso, Picasso is probably the most famous, famous like a uh, fine artist who used color uh, really in a really interesting way. Picasso had two different stages in his work of art. He had something called, they call it the blue, his blue period. And it was a time in Picasso's life when he was really sad and all of his paintings are in different shades of blue. And then he has a separate, a second period called the rose period. And that's um, a period in Picasso's personal life when he was, I think, in love and he was feeling really happy and optimistic. And a lot of his drawings and paintings are in different shades of pink. <laughs> so it, it, color can really, really affect the moods. So today, um, I want you to, like I said before, I want you to find a drawing that you might have done before. It can be in your sketchbook. It can be, um, you know, a sketch of different characters you have that we, if you, if you joined me the other day, we did a bunch of eyes. It could be something from that day. It could be something from a different day. It can just be a, a, a character that you draw, or um, it can be a, it could be something as simple as just a shape that you've repeated over and over again. But what I want you to do today is in your drawings, I want you to see if you can pick out some different types of color schemes. So I was just kind of thinking about the first one. I was thinking about like sadness. And so I started doing like the, the low lights uh, in this drawing in blues and the highlights in like different shades of um, peaches. So that was one, ex like one, one color scheme I was going to do. I was thinking maybe for a different um, one of my drawings, I would pick a complementary color scheme of purples and, um, and yellows. So before I get started, I always kind of just like pick out all the colors and like I kind of kind of just go through all the colors that I have and I, I pull them out and I kind of put them near each other and I like see how they see what they look like near each other. So that might be something like this, like a complementary color scheme. It might be a different, um, I might do a different face with complementary colors. I was also thinking for another one, I might do like similar similar to up, I might do like a more muted color, color, um, color scheme where the tones are really um, uh, grays and, um, and like uh, maybe like peaches. So maybe I use I don't know, some gray, some peach. Maybe I find some like browns. Something like this could be a different color scheme. I could do it one that's um, another color scheme I could do it are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Colors that are next to each other are called, there's another word for it, they're called analogous colors analogous colors are colors that are right near each other on the color wheel. So like for instance, 
um, blue, green, and yellow are analogous colors. So they can be colors that um, that uh, that you you choose to do a, a picture of that are all right, like near each other on the color wheel. Another and the last, so you have complementary colors, which are colors that are across from each other. So here, complementary are colors that are across from each other. So like this one, and this one, you have analogous colors that are neck near each other on the color wheel. And um, the other thing you could think about is cool versus warm. So depending on um, your pictures, like if, if you're if you're doing like a superhero that's like, you know, Iceman and he's like his his power is like that he, you know, that he that he that he creates, you know, ice from thin air, then maybe the colors of him are, are more on the cooler side. So if I draw a line pretty much right here. Well, yeah, pretty much right here between the two. Let me make that line thicker. like this, you have half of the color wheel are your cool colors and the other half are your warm. So these are the cool colors, the purples and blues and greens and the warm side would be your reds and oranges and yellows. So that could be a different color scheme you pick to do a drawing in. So I just wanted to show you this because Colors can affect mood and it's really interesting to try to think about what colors you might do before you do them, before you, before you uh, start just going at it. So, and it's also kind of interesting to try out some different kinds of color schemes. So I'm going to work on this drawing. And like I said before, I'm going to pick out a couple of different types of schemes. I think that maybe for this one, I'm going to do some muted colors. So I'm going to start with that. So I never finished these drawings. So I'm just actually going to go back in and I kind of like add some more little sections. This is just kind of how I'm how I'm doing mine, but your drawings could look totally different than mine. You could be working in a totally different way. If you want to, if you have a plant, like how I was originally going to teach this drawing was if I was going to have you do a sketch of a plant. And if you want to do that um, and then you, uh, use that as your drawing to color on top of, you're more than welcome to. I mean, what would, it, what would leaves look like if they were plaid? What would what would leaves look like if they were pink? I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of up to you. Like if you were in like a magical alien landscape, what would the, the plants look like there? So I'm just trying to start to think about what kinds of colors you want um, and what kind of mood you want to set. So hopefully that makes sense. I covered a lot. That was a lot of information I just threw at you guys. I hope uh, you got some of it. Like I said, if you ever, or when you're in college and you, um, if, hopefully you're all studying art, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. If you ever see a class that's called color theory, you should take it because there is so much to um, color uh, and, and how we perceive it, how we see it, and, and all of the, the ways that colors react against one another. Because all the things that I'm talking about in color right now are all tied to 2D work. So drawing and, and actually like using your, your colored pencils or your markers or your crayons and adding color. But color is totally different when it's in light too. So colors on a computer screen are totally, it's a totally different story. So, all right. Does anybody have a color scheme or I'd love to see what you guys picked to, to, to color on top of. Anybody wants to show me what they're, what they're working on, working on. I'd love to see it. Nobody. Okay. No worries. You guys are all just, if you're just getting started, you're more than welcome to keep working. Um, if you're doing a character of yours, I would suggest like making sure you have a couple of different drawings of that character and try a couple of different color schemes. Try a couple of different color schemes. So I'm 
Um, these are like more abstract faces that I'm doing. I, I just kind of picked them one because they were here, they were already drawn, but two, because I could be a little more freehand, freehand them. Um, I did not have to like, these, these, these faces are kind of abstract and they're not, I'm not trying to draw a super realistic character here. these are just kind of, kind of crazy drawings that I'm doing. So I can, uh, I felt like I could, um, I have more freedom to, to do some kind of wackier colors. Here we go. So um, when I'm doing mine, what I'm thinking about are also I'm thinking about light and where the light is going to hit these faces that I'm drawing. So the, the far side of these kind of wacky faces are going to be the darker side. So I'm taking, I'm looking at the colors that I picked. That I picked. This is my more muted um, color scheme. And the darker colors are going to be on the more shadowy side of the face. And the brighter colors are going to be on the more highlighted side of the face. That's, that's how um, I, you can kind of get a sense of where the light is coming. So I'm taking those lighter colors and they're going to be on the front side. And that you have to decide in your drawings where the light is coming from. Uh, it's totally up to you. You guys are the artists. You get to choose where that light is. So for this one, just doing stuff like this. One of the things, one of the things for these drawings that I'm doing for my, for um, these little areas or planes of the face, these portraits that I'm coloring in, I'm, I'm keeping them really flat. I'm not really blending the colors together with the exception of the fact that um, I think in the eyes, for the eyeballs, that's where I will use a different color that's different than the colors that I have picked out right here because I want those eyeballs to really stand out. I want them to like be um, kind of set apart from the other parts of the face. So for the eyes, not only will I choose a different color but I also might mix or blend a couple colors together because that will also draw attention to the eyes because nowhere else in my drawing will I have colors that are a blend. Here we go. So. Color scripting is really interesting. Um, when you're watching a new movie or when you're watching a movie, I challenge you to try to see what what the what the animators were doing in the like when they were picking out the colors. I challenge you to try to like see like well how, what were what were they trying to what were they trying to achieve? What was the art this artist trying to achieve when they picked this this um, bunch of colors in their drawings or in their in their animation. Let's see. So actually I think it'd be really interesting. I I, I really, really, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but I really, really love the new Pixar movie Soul that just came out. So it'd be kind of cool to go back in and um and and just kind of thinking about like what colors they picked. And I wonder because there's two different if you haven't seen the movie, I won't, I won't like spoil anything, but basically there's two, two or three different like areas that the characters kind of exist in, in this movie. And I think it'd be really interesting if the um, creators, if they chose like a totally different color scheme to help signify where the, where the characters were. So if like, it's kind of like an afterworld or an, like, it's kind of like, yeah, like a, Kind of like a heaven-ish like area. I don't know. It's not even heaven. I don't know what you would call it, but it's like a the character. The character kind of goes goes to like this place that that's like not clearly not Earth. And I'm wondering if the colors are brighter, if they're more like super saturated in that in those scenes versus the scenes where the character is actually on the Earth.
also like a, like the thinking about like a city if you have a city area seen in your in your in your drawings like what would the colors for a city versus more like a more rural area like how would they change how would they be different color can really draw attention to something it can it can not only set the mood it can draw attention to an area I think I need more browns. Yeah, I think I need like, yeah, like this. I use this like reddish brown for the hair. There we go. Does anybody want to share what they're working on? I'd love to see what you guys are drawing or coloring on top of. I know I just kind of went off the book a little bit today. I didn't do what, uh, what was written in the description, but I thought this would be a better way of adding color. Yeah, Kat, what's up? Um, so this isn't exactly what I'm doing because I'm working on something to give my grandmother for her birthday, but I thought I'd share anyway. The card. Ooh, I love that. That's okay. What do, uh, are you are you painting it? Are you doing um watercolors? It's um alcohol markers, alcohol based markers. Oh, those are nice. And you know what you are like, as long as you're working in color, you are doing You're you are kind of doing exactly what we're doing. It's just you're uh, you're working on something to give give to your your grandma, which is awesome. I love that. That looks great. It's beautiful. Are you um, did you look at a picture of it? What kind of bird is it? Is it a cardinal? Yes, the cardinal. Yeah. So did you look at pictures of a cardinal of cardinals or did you? I looked at a picture of a cardinal. I looked at some pictures and I found one that I liked and kind of I did that, but I kind of did a little bit different. Made the head shape a little longer. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. That's that's very cool. And you know, you, you you did just just by virtue of the fact that cardinals are specific colors like that's how you, I guess that's kind of how you can identify a cardinal is because it's, you know, of its colors. You had to pick out the color scheme ahead of time. <laughs> hmm, very nice. Very cool. Yeah, if anybody else wants to share what they're working on, I'd love to see. So, there's another word that you probably have heard of when it comes to color, and that's the phrase saturated versus unsaturated. And what that means in a color is um, a color that is saturated is super, super bright. Uh, it's like, it's pure color. It's like if when you get paint and you, you, you get tube, a bunch of tubes of paint and you squirt the, the tube of the, the red right out of the right out of the tube and it's it's just you have a glob of red paint on your paint palette that's a super saturated red now if you took that red and you uh, watered it down and you added lots of water to it and you got like a, a lighter red then you're desaturating the color a little bit so it's a little bit less saturated if you took that color that red that red paint that you put on your paint palette and you added um a white to it not only would you make some sort of shade of pink, but you are uh, desaturating that color. So you're making what's called a tint because you've added white. Now, if you take that same super saturated red and you add black to it, you're also desaturating it because you're mixing it with, some, with something else. You're making it, you're gonna make it darker. And you'll probably, when you mix red and black, you kind of get like a kind of a, either like a maroon or a kind of a muddy, a muddy brownish, darkish reddish color. Um, and that is called a shade. So tint is when you add white to a color. Shade is when you add black to a color. And um, and both and and what and just adding water can also desaturate a color when you're working in paints. So those are just some of the ways that you um, there that that that's one of the words that you might have heard of is, is saturated, saturated or, or desaturated. So right now with the colors that I'm doing, these colors are all pretty saturated. I'm not really like 
I'm not really watering any of them down in any way, you know? So, super saturated colors. All right. would like to share something i'd love to see hey hello so um i kind of made my own board game Ooh. so it goes to five players okay and um each player requires a penny okay so kind of put the penny there and you need to get it in the middle of one of these dots to score, and who, and you need to kind of slide your penny in, like just a bunch of slides to get in. Okay. And then who has the most slides win. Oh wait, so how, do you drop the penny? How does the penny get in those in those areas? Okay, I'll show you. So I'm just gonna put this on player one, and for if I swipe. And so oh, I see. To get in the middle here. Okay. On the X or the ovals. Oh, that's really neat. That's really, really cool. I like this game. That's a really cool, um, that's a really cool game. It's almost like, um, uh, like, uh, was it paper football? I don't know what it's called. But yeah, that's really cool. Or it almost looks like um, air hockey <laughs> kind of-esque. So are you going to add color to it? You should you should think about what what kind of colors and color scheme you want your game to be. Like and if like how you would if you want those like circles and those areas of your game to stand out, like how do you pick a color that there that's going to pop so that like it stands out versus the background of the game. I tried adding color to um one of my boards. Uh-huh. I, I I'm just scared you're scared to? Why, why, what, what, when you tried adding it the first time, what, what happened? What, what did you not like about it? I think your connection froze up. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. When you come back, we'll get Alaska, we'll get you. <laughs> but a game is a good, that's a good example of like how, yeah, how do you make something stand out? So you see, using color, I was I, I mostly finished with this one drawing down here. You can see how the areas where the, the that are lighter colored are where the high, the highlight areas, the highlighted areas are, and the colors that um, are in the grays and the browns are the shaded area. So they're the areas that are in shadow. And like I said before, now for the eyes, because I want the eyes to pop. Um, because I want that area to, to stand out. I'm going to pick a totally different color that wasn't part of my original color scheme. So I'm not going to, I'm going to put all of these colors aside. I'm going to pick some other colors. Mm, maybe for the eyes, maybe the, they'll be bluish. So I, like I said, I, I'm going to mix some colors together. So I'm pulling out a couple of different varieties of blues, some in lighter shades, some in darker shades. And sometimes I like to test them out like on a, another sheet of paper before I work. Um, like I like this one for a darker color. Yeah, this one's kind of nice for a lighter. And then maybe, maybe one, one teal. Maybe, let's see, for just, yeah, for some, like a hint of, maybe this one, for a hint of lightness. Yeah, this one, I'm gonna use these three. So for the eyes, I'm going to make like the eye on the outside is going to be darker. The, the iris, if you were part of my drawing of eye class, then um, you know that there's like different colors in your eyes. People's eyes, people's eyes aren't blue or aren't just brown. There's different shades and tints to the eyes, uh, which is really interesting. And if you want them to look more realistic, then you want to mix the colors in a little bit. I'm mixing the colors just a little. Some brightness. There we go. All right. So I wanted those eyes to pop a little bit. Maybe, maybe one more darker color around the edge. Yeah, I like that.
Let me sharpen this. I can even, I want it to be even a little brighter. I can maybe take a little yellow greenish color. Yeah, there we go. Add a little bit even brighter color in there. All right, so now hopefully those eyes pop out of the face a little bit. All right, um, oh, uh, who was it that, that we lost connection with Scott? I don't know if they're back. Talking about his pinning game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You were talking about um, the colors you were picking for it. So yeah, so it, like I said, I was saying that it's really interesting. A game is really interesting because you want like areas of your, of your, you want it to be really clear, like the different sides of the game. So if I think of games and colors, colors that are in games, you either like they, they're either like black and white, <laughs> like chess and checkers um, to make it really clear, like whose play pieces are what. Um, but there's I'm thinking like Candyland is <laughs> super bright and fun colored versus, I don't know, name some other games. There's some other like board games. Do retro video games count as black and white? Definitely. Okay, then Pong. <laughs> yeah, what's up, Nathaniel? Can I ask your mind? Absolutely. Oh, you might have to turn your background off. When you, whenever you try to share and there's a background screen on, it's really hard to see. Although I, I dig your space background. There you go. Now I see you. Oh, cool. That's really neat. Whoa. Tell me about that. That's, I love this drawing. I love that your, your bold lines. This is really cool. Wait, Nathaniel. Oh, wait, I think you're muted. We can't hear you. Hold on. There are several eyes here. Yeah. Because this one is an eye, and this one is an eye. This one's an eye. It's just uh -huh. tricky because there's a lot of lines. Yeah. That's kind of cool, though. So wait, is it is it your? It's not. It's diff. This is different from your regular character. So is this just like it's like a mishmash almost? Yeah. It's kind of like this abstract design. It almost looks like it's like. I imagine it's a, yeah, I imagine it's like a, an epic, like, battle, and like, then like, it's like uh, the Tasmanian devil, like, it, it, there, the characters are like so tangled up on, in, in one another, you can't see either of them, <laughs> except for bits and pieces. It's kind of cool. Very cool. Thank you. All right. Well, so I've done... I did one in more muted colors. For the next one, I think I'm going to pick a, a complementary color scheme. So for that one, I'm going to pick some purples and some yellows. Maybe even I'll throw in a pale green. Like that. So like, like I said before, you want a variety so that you can have um, areas of highlight and areas of low light. So I think I will do, maybe I'll do this one over here, this, this, this character. I'm just gonna add some more areas, some more lines. I'm just, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just kind of like going for it, adding in some details, some areas to cut. To there we go. But yeah, color is color is really powerful, and I feel like so a lot of times it's it, it can be overlooked. You don't ever want to overlook the color because there's so much you can do with it. So 
So I add some other areas. Let's see. Evie would like to share. Oh, I'd love to see. Let's see, Evie, Evie. Hello. I'm just doing this, this OC a day where you design an OC every day. And yeah. Just coloring it. Oh, nice. So tell me about like what color, color, colors did you pick and why? Um, well, it's kind of supposed to be based on wind or snow. So I tried to pick like grays and light blues. Ooh, nice. I like that. Very nice. Thank you. Awesome. I'd love to see when you're totally, totally done. Um, but I love it. It looks, looks awesome. Um, I wanted to, I found something like, uh, that I wanted to show you. So this is an example. So of obviously it's from Aladdin, the genie. He, he's a good example of complementary colors. So colors that are like across from each other on the color wheel. So blue and yellow. So the artist picked, obviously his, his body is blues and different kind of shades or tones of blue. So where the light, you can see where the light is hitting the genie. Like it's a lighter color blue than where the shadows are, but his um, little wrist, uh, his wrist wristlets, his wrist bracelets are, um, are, are yellow and that they really pop against his blue body. So that was kind of a good choice so that you could really see them. Because if the artist had picked a different, the illustrator had picked a different color, um, they might have blended into his body. So that was just kind of an example of how you can make things pop using complementary colors. I'm looking through my examples to see if I can find any other example, uh, any other things to share with you. Oh, this is a great one. This is a uh, an example of, um, oh, oh my gosh, I can't remember the name of the, it's a not Murakami, I can't, but I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, but it's an example of also complementary colors of greens and reds. And you can see that um, the red, this, she has, she's playing a radio. So the girl is laying in grass and she's listening to a radio and the radio really, really pops against the green um, because they're, they are complementary colors. They are colors across from each other. Yeah. I was looking at your, your comments. So, and the other thing that is really kind of cool about this um, example is that I was talking about saturated versus unsaturated. So the green grass and the, the red radio and her red hair bow are all really bright, super saturated colors. Now her um, little, her, her shirt and her like smock and her dress are also green and red. They're the same colors. They're just desaturated. You can see that they're like, they're, they've been toned down. So the, her, her green shirt and her almost like pale pinkish like pinafore. So it's really an, a, a, an interesting way of making um, making something pop or um, like and using color to really direct the viewer's eye. So if there's ever something really, really important in your drawing that you really want to stand out, think about how can you use color to make that area really stand out. So there we go. All right. Some other, let me look through and see if there's any more examples. Oh, this is one of, this is a classic one. This is definitely a classic one. This is like a, um, from the Ugly Duck, Duckling film. I think it was a, a, I think it was an early Disney film. Is it a Disney? I can't remember. But this one's really interesting. This one uses color to direct your attention because the only duckling, <laughs> <laughs> that's different is white. So he really stands up because the rest of the picture is all in color. So that really the ugly duckling, your eye is kind of drawn to the, I, I think he's kind of cute. I don't want to call him ugly. So the cute duckling. <laughs> so that's another way you can use color or the lack of color to direct your viewers attention. So color can set mood, it can, can direct attention, it can um, set locations. Uh, this is an example right here from Finding Nemo of analogous colors. Analogous, remember I was telling you analogous? Analogous colors over here are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So 
um, in, in the sea and finding Nemo where he's in this, the sea and enemy where he lives, the colors that they picked are all right near each other. So they're all like in the reds, oranges, and even like bordering on like purples color, colors, color, area, uh, color scheme. So this is all um, colors. That there, there's only like three colors that are really found in this, in this picture. And it can be, it can be a way to set a tone too. So analogous colors, different example. Ooh, this is uh, from Ratatouille. And you can see they used a lot of cool colors. And this is like a scene where the, they're in the, um, the sewer. And so it's kind of interesting because I feel like when you're doing a city, if you have a city scene, a lot of times cities are grays and um, blues. Um, and this, so this entire picture is, is, is all in, um, in, in cool colors. So another example. I think that's all the examples I have right now. But don't overlook color. It's really, really important. It's a really important element of art. Does anybody else have anything they want to share? No? All right. Well, then I am going to continue. I was working on this one over here. Okay. Yeah, Kat. Kat would like to share. What's up, Kat? Um, well, I have gotten further on my cardinal. Oh, well, let's to show see. where I am so far. Ooh, nice blending. Nice blending of colors on the, um, on the tip of the wing. The, I like how Thank you're, you. I like how you are going from that super dark maroonish red all the way to like the bright red belly. There's some good shading. That looks awesome. I love it. Your grandmother is going to love that. Don't forget to sign it when you're. Don't forget to sign it when you're done. You definitely just sign sign and date that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love it. Um. Good question, Tater Tot. Uh, um. I think that we're probably fine to share that. I, I would say that if we had students who were really, really young, maybe not. But I think you're okay. I, want, I kind of want to know what fruit gore is because I don't even really know. Like, are we talking like like fruit ninja splash? <laughs> like, what, what does that mean? That's kind of cool. All right. Well, now I now I have now I'm curious. So you have to share. <laughs> No, not yet, not yet, <laughs> Scott, not yet. <laughs> he's he's not ready. All right, okay. Whenever whenever you're ready. I figured I'd put him on the spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> he literally put you on the spotlight. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna work on this this one over here, and so I'm using complementary colors. I was gonna use shades and tones of. Um, of uh, yellows and um, almost peaches for the highlight side and um, like different shades of purples for the shaded side. So that's going to be like a complementary color scheme. Fruit gore, some of candy gore, except uh, that's kind of awesome. I love that. I totally love that. What is that? Is that from a, a game or like who, like, where? Like where was uh, that? It's, it's kind of an aesthetic. I don't know who coined the term or made it, but it's like a somebody started was like, hey, what if I made like internal organs this other thing so it's not is like gory or anything? And then people were like, hey, that's a good idea, and started doing it, and people ended up liking it. I love that. I think that's really like a rad idea. I think that's really really cool. It's um. There is an artist, oh, I have to research it. Hold on, I'm gonna find the name of the artist that um, he's like, it's a, he's a classic artist, hold on. Um, let me 
find it. Oh, yes, yeah, it's Archimboldo, Giuseppe Archimboldo. And he, he was known for doing faces that were entirely out of fruits and vegetables. So from a distance, it looked like it's a face, but then, or a portrait of a person. But then when you get up close, it's like this is, it's all it is, is it's entirely fruit <laughs> and vegetables. It's really, really interesting. Uh, I actually saw the work in person um, in a museum. I think it was in DC many years ago. Oops, let me do that. Um, I'll see if I can find a picture. He was, and he was, he was an artist um, who was from the Renaissance. So here, I'll, um, I'll, I'll put a link in the comments if you're curious what his work looks like. It's really cool. If you want, you can go to, go to that link and you'll see You'll see some really surreal faces. <laughs> really, really weird. <laughs> and he does them based on, um, he did them because he, he's, he's from like the 15, he was, I think he was like in the 1560s, 1570s. Um, he, he did like different portraits based on like what fruits and vegetables were, uh, um, were in season so we have like a winter like a winter portrait versus like a summer portrait it's kind of cool pretty cool yeah if you if you get a chance to you should you should check that out that that show that that, that, that I, when i saw them in person they were really really cool because they were um because they were, uh, like the closer you get up to them, the more details there are, which is, which is sometimes is rare with pictures. Like it was just like the closer you get to it, like the more you saw. <laughs> Did anybody else think that Picasso was from, so it was from the century? No, Picasso is pretty recent. Picasso is like uh, from the early 1900s. Picasso was, was a, he's a more, much more modern artist, but it's good to, so Chuck Jones, I think, I think when he studied, he studied fine arts. So even though he was, he, he was known for being an animator and known for like all of his, 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 his cartoons and animations, um, he actually studied fine arts. So he, he studied painting and he studied drawing. And, and part of that, when you, if you, if you go to college and study um, art is learning about these like, um, famous artists and it's it's really kind of interesting because a lot of artists borrow from one another like you know it's uh there's there's a lot of a lot of borrowing of ideas like there's very few ideas that are totally brand new never been seen before a lot of art is really borrowing from things that you've seen and if you look at artists throughout the age a lot of them are inspired by each other. And I mean, you probably just by being in this class, there's probably some of you that have been inspired by your classmates. Um, and that's a totally natural thing um, just of that artists do. Uh, so it's, it, it, there's, it's definitely like a thing. So I, I it, 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 Chuck Jones um, was definitely inspired in some ways by Picasso, I'm sure, and by other artists of, of that time in that era. Nathaniel would like to share. Yeah, let's see Nathaniel. Oh, I just drew a character, drew a cheater. Hold on, let's see that. Oh, whoa, cool. Your line work is beautiful, dude. You're, you are like, you're using that paint, that paint pen, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're, uh, you're getting really good with it. Like, I, I love the, the variety of different, um, line weights. You have like thick and thin, which I is awesome. I just forgot to add the eyebrows. <laughs> you can add those in. I'm curious, are you going to add color to it though? I might. Uh, I like it black and white though. I know. Well, the whole the whole idea behind all of the, all of these all of 
weeks, I'm challenging you guys to push yourself out of your comfort zone. So try something you might not have tried before. Just see, try, you never know. Like, I, even though color might not, might not be like everything in the world, uh, we, we don't learn unless we step outside of our comfort zones and try something new. Peter would like to share. Love to see. I was just uh, like to see the doodling. Oh, rad. You, I love you too. You chose a nice complimentary color scheme there. That's awesome. Thank you. I love it. Wait, hold it up again. I want to see that. This character is really kind of, it's kind of cute. Oh, those ears and the little nose. <laughs> you looks really sad though. Are those tears that are dripping down? Uh, yeah, kind of, I guess. Oh, well, the colors are, are spot on. I think that those yellows and blues, you kind of cannot go wrong with putting yellows and blues together. They're great, even though they're not um, totally complementary. Like if you're looking at the color wheel, yellow and blue um, are not directly across from one another. So they're not totally complementary. They're still like across from each other enough that they pop against one another. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just like making characters sad. Oh, well, then using using blues as like your sh your shadowed color, shaded colors are a great way to do that. Um, if you've ever watched a Spielberg movie, um, Spielberg is really, really known for using color um, in his in his work. So and one of the one of his tricks is like he changes the light and the colors um, based on how emotional the scene is. So if 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 it's supposed to be a really emotional scene in this in a move in a Spielberg movie, the lights will get really like almost yellow colored, um, and it's just it's just his way of like con conveying that like this is this is a very emotional moment and it works because you feel emotional when you're watching it. You're like oh that character, you know I feel bad. <laughs> It's kind of it's kind of interesting um let me see like it was you probably you guys have probably never seen the movie lincoln but it was, it was really apparent in lincoln looking at a list of spielberg movies spielberg had a cold film that turned into a video game that's a little fun fact there he had a cold movie and it turned into a video game and huh. it was an adventure game made by lucas arts Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. The BFG, I haven't seen the BFG, but I bet you he, Spielberg uses cut like color in an interesting way in that movie. It has so, sort of more of a fantasy vibe uh, to the BFG. Yeah, well, it's, it's yeah, it's based on the, um, on the book. Um, which was a fantasy. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, of the giant. But um, yeah, I would. I need to. I need to watch that. I haven't seen it. It's. It, it's sometimes when you have like a fantasy film, you can actually get even crazier with the colors. When you're doing something that's more realistic, um, and uh, uh, and it gets to look, you know, more 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 realism, then um, you don't have as much freedom to to go wild and wacky with the colors. I just was just reading. <laughs> no, movie directors, rain means sadness. <laughs> you, rain is rain. I don't know this. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, rain, rain sometimes, especially if it's like a romance movie, can like be like a, a signify like a, a like a super romantic moment. But it also could be like sadness. Evie, I'm with you. I like the rain. When I, I'm, at, we're in, I'm in Southern California and it rarely rains here, but when it does, I like to go outside in it. <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm weird, but it doesn't rain here enough for me. See, I'm really liking this, this one I'm working on right now. I really like the, how the, the, the purple, the, you have like the yellows and the purples. I like these two colors, like, um, and how they're, how they're uh, reacting against one another. I think I'm gonna keep working on this one a little bit more.
So, like I said, I hope that you guys are challenged by um, something this month, that one of the classes that you take, you try something that is outside of your comfort zone that you might not have tried before, because that's how you grow. It's how you get better. It's by trying things that you might not, like, I mean, it might, it might be a complete failure. You might try something and be like, well, I did, that happened. <laughs> or you might, you might make a piece of art and you're like, well, that one's terrible, but hey, if you tried something new, then you are winning. <laughs> like it's, I know I repeat the Chuck Jones quote a lot, but there are a thousand, thousands of bad drawings you have to get out first before you get out of your system first before you can get to the good ones. And um, sometimes it's, it, sometimes it's, it is about failing. <laughs> sometimes it is about doing something that you don't like. So every day this week, I know there was no class yesterday, but every other instructor this week is going to be focusing on color and doing um, their own interpretation of color. So I think Mike, is Mike Funt tomorrow, um, Scott? Um, it's Daryl. Sorry, it Daryl. Yeah, I think it might be Daryl. Daryl tomorrow. Okay, so that's, so Daryl will be tomorrow. Daryl is gonna be approaching, I think he's also doing color and mood. So he'll probably tack on to some of the things that I've said. Uh, and then you'll have Mike Funt who will talk about um, color and comedy, which is kind of fascinating. I'm, I'm totally interested in how he's approaching it. And then Nalene is going to be doing a totally different cl class on color. So it's interesting if you tune in um, every day this week, there's a, a new, a new approach and you'll learn something new from each of us. Um, I hope you guys had fun. Does anybody want to share their their works in progress or finished work? I'd love to see that uh, that cardinal if you're if you're um, if you've done any more of it, Evie. Oh, cute Nathaniel. Those are that's the characters. Oh, nice. I see some a little some shading. I see some some color color working its way in there. Yay! Awesome. I like I it. Love, I love the the thick and and thin lines of this pen. I seriously recommend this pen to you. Please, just buy the pen. Yeah, you know what? I, I think I have the same ones, the Pentel. <laughs> so yeah, these pens are awesome. These pens are awesome. They are really tricky to use because it's like using a paintbrush, but if you practice and work at these, you can get some really cool effects. Um, oh. Thank you, Scott. So I forgot to mention that we're we started. We're doing taking donations. So if you enjoyed this class and you um, are enjoying enjoying any of our classes, you can always tell your parents to make a donation to our center. It keeps our doors open. It allows us to be able to do more classes like this for free for you guys. And if you are really interested and you want to learn more, we we also offer offer. Um, private lessons and group lessons. So if you and a friend want to do a lesson together, if there's something that you really are interested, if you feel like, hey, I have this idea for a comic book and I want to make it, um, I just need some help. That's the kind of thing that we are great at helping and guiding you through. So, um, or if you're not sure what you want to learn, you just know you want to get more, you do more art and get better at it, then private lessons are an awesome way to tailor these classes to your interests and the things that you like to draw. So um, you could be one on one with one of us, which would be awesome. Um, but I hope that you guys had fun today. I see somebody said they're done adding color. Oh, yeah. Does anybody else last call on sharing? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, totally. It's what your oh, it says no grammar. What is I don't know what your real name is. Um, safe. Oh, nice. So I just finished adding color to everything on my board game. Oh, nice. So the colors. It took a while. Okay. Tell and me over how. here on the three, I kind of had to improvise because I made kind of a smudge. So I put lines as in the illusion that it was um, that it was moving. Oh. So for you, color has a special significance because it tells you like, like what player goes where. Is that like how it works? 
Yeah, I just wanted to put like different colors for everything so it kind of just everything caught the eye because in this game you kind of need to memorize like what number you are because most pennies just basically look the same. Ah, okay, gotcha. Well, cool. Nice work. I'm glad that you were able to add some color to your to your game. The game is an interesting challenge. That is something that I hadn't I hadn't thought of examples of. I was thinking mostly drawings, but I love that. I love that kind of thinking like, well, game designers need to use color too. So how and how like what are some cool examples for that? So thanks for helping me think outside of the box. Um, all right. Uh, any other any other anybody else? I think Sola might have her hand up. Did you want to share? Sorry, I think I just went to Cat. Oh, sorry, Cat. I want to see yours too. See Cat's and Sola's. <laughs> Let's see. Uh oh. Okay. So um uh this is where I've gotten, but now I'm stuck because I don't know what to do for the background. Oh, uh, you know what? So um, I would offer I would offer a suggestion that's based on the color color. So um, I if I were you, I would your your bird is so bright and bold and you want it to stand out. So I would choose a more pastel -y color for the background. And if you want it to really, really stand out, I, I, would, I would choose a color that's across from the reds on the color wheel. So like, it could be like a light blue background. It could be a light green background. Um, but yeah, you want a color that's gonna make that cardinal really pop and really stand out in your picture. So I would, if I, if, if I were doing it, I would go either really light blue or really light green. But uh, you know, one thing I'm noticing, Kat, that I love about your your cardinal, cardinal, is how on the legs and how they're like the color. There's I can see that it's like a little darker near the top of that leg, which shows shadow, which makes your cardinal look more realistic, which is awesome. Really cool work. Nice, nice adding color. Thank you. To that. Hope that helped. Um, uh, Sole want to share? Yeah, I think Sully wanted to share. All right. Please do not mind the smudging. The smudging, I'm still working on it and the blending. But I went back to my new MC that I made and I'm just coloring it right now. Ooh, beautiful blending and shading. I, I didn't talk much about the blending and shading of colors, but, <laughs> um, but I, I like how you're in your, like in the darker blue areas, the shad shaded areas, you have, um, you, you have some value there. You're going from like darker yeah. to lighter. And recently I bought um, new pe color pencils, so I wanted to try them out. They're a little weird, yeah. but I'm getting used to them. Yeah, well, it's, it's cool to like try things out on old drawings like that. So awesome. Nice work. Really nice work. Very cool. All right. Oh, <laughs> Evie thinks it's perfect. Mwah, she gives you like a, 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 a an, an OK sign. Um, all right, last call for anybody who would like to share. If not, no worries. Um, I hope that everybody did. Um, I hope everybody had fun. I hope everybody tried out, tried something new, thought, tried some, did something that was uh, maybe a little challenging or different. <laughs> oh, nice. All right. All right, guys. Well, I hope you had fun. Um, if you like this, like I said, you can donate. Maybe there's a, uh, a, um, a link that Scott posted. Otherwise, we will see you guys um, next week, or I'll see you next week, and, and I hope you guys pop in on some of the other teachers this week. Do some other classes on color. Bye. Yeah. All right, guys. Bye. Oh. Bye, everyone. Good to see you.